Hello there, this is Carlo. Welcome to another video. And we're just looking at Modo uh, version 10.0 v1. Um, now, uh, you know, a little disclaimer, I'm not too clued up on Modo. Um, it's something that I've meant to try and get into, try and learn. Um, but I will get there in the end. But um, I've just got the, I've got the entire um, productivity suite. Um, so I've just updated to uh, Modo. Uh, uh, like I said, Modo 10.0 v1. So I just thought we'd go through it together um, just to see basically what's new uh, within this release. So I'm just going to go to latest features. Um, I've got the upgrade because I actually own Modo uh, at the moment. So um, it's great that you can, you know, the foundry are allowing you guys or allowing us to upgrade to the latest versions. Um, of Modo free of charge. So I'm just going to scroll down so we can sort of have a look um, at these little bits and pieces together um, and just basically go through what might be new over 9.2. So it says here uh, Modo 10 series delivers valuable new feature sets in a series of free installments for a single price, blah blah blah. Uh, so we've got 902. So here we go. So what's new in Modo uh, 10.0 v1? Um, so the first installment of Modo 10 series, uh, Modo 10.0 v1, offers significantly advanced workflow for creating real-time content for games or other immersive interactive experiences like virtual reality. Um, uh, with it, you can basically uh, offer Modo and be confident uh, that your assets will look virtually the same in Un Unity or Unreal Engine. So. This version of Modo looks like it's basically geared towards the gamer um, and, and uh, the game creator, which is pretty cool. Um, exports to popular engines with simple automated steps that minimize the need to cre recreate work. Okay, so let's just go down and have a look um, at a few of these videos. I've got Modo um, open at the moment. I'll just quickly show you uh, about Modo. And as you can see, I am on 10.0 v1 uh, at the moment, which is cool. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the normal Modo, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but it looks like we've got game tools here. Uh, so we've got another um, option here um, to create game stuff. Uh, let's just play that. And basically, this will probably just uh, render what's in here, like the blocks and stuff like that. So while it's doing let's open up this and see what we've got so let's just have a look here um, at this uh, little video here uh, just to see what the fbx enhancements is x2015 plugin offers support for the widely used fbx 2014 format delivering better compatibility with popular real-time engines We've also included a number of enhancements with this update. Output directories can be preset for easy iteration. Meshes can be auto-triangulated. FBX export units are easier to control. Interesting. UV sets are exported alphabetically. Color correction is automatically applied to all normal maps and all clips loaded from FBX and other non-LXO formats. Both instancing and replicator information can now be exported from FBX or simplified population of larger scenes in game engines like Unity, which support this feature. Furthermore, animation from FBX files can now be imported and merged onto items in the scene or applied to the actors as actions. So that's pretty cool. So basically, that sounds like what it's telling me is that I can use uh, Unity, the program Unity, um, and it basically works flawlessly with um, Modo, to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's look at the enhancements uh, UV and UDIM workflows just to see um, what is better about that. Let's just check this out. Moto 10 further refines UV and UDIM workflows that can be tedious in other applications. A new wizard dramatically simplifies the process of creating UDIM image sets that appear in the shader tree as a single image. These UDIM textures can now be baked like any other texture. UVs can now be exported to the widely supported XML-based SVG graphics format, 
This feature includes the ability to export a selected range of UDIMs, either spread out or in separate layers. Additionally, the advanced physically based viewport supports display of multiple UDIM tiles, further improving parity between Modo's viewport and renderer. Right, that's, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. So let's look at uh, real time content and workflow creation. Let's check that out together. Like I said, guys, I am looking at this the same time um, as you. Um, I'm checking out Modo for the uh, Modo 10 for the first time as you. So this is not just rehearsed. This is me checking out at the same time. But this is what I normally do when I upgrade a product is check out these videos um, just to basically try and let them explain to me um, what is new about the update and what is new about the product. So let's continue. So this is real time content. Uh, creation workflows, so let's have a look at this. Moto 10 offers workflows and refinements specifically targeted at artists creating content for real-time applications. Whether you're creating assets for games or VR experiences, the game tools layout will simplify the process. This new layout employs a new approach to optimizing multidiscipline workflows and is centered around the everyday tasks of vertex normal editing, texture baking, and exporting to game engines while still providing quick access to modeling, brush, and setup tools. This layout offers hideable panels that provide you with quick access to what you need in a way that doesn't clutter the creative process. In addition, you can now navigate through your Moto scene as you would a video game level, with a new first-person shooter mode that uses the mouse to look around now that's cool. and the keyboard to move, enabling you to evaluate your scene as a player would see it. That's cool. That is really, really cool. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not a video game creator, but if you if you was a video game creator, I mean, that that is just awesome. So this is what I'm sort of interested in, everyday tools uh, made better. So let's just check this out quickly. <coughs> uh, let's check this out together. Moto 10 continues to improve the tools you use every day. From modeling, to texturing, to painting, to dynamics, to color selection. For example, the Vertex Map Painting Toolset now offers a choice of blend modes, as well as the ability to mask vertex colors by color channel and by polygon selection. Interesting. And a new option to view each channel in isolation. The Smooth Tools received a new volume preservation option, dramatically improving the smoothing of complex surfaces. That's excellent. The occlusion shader has been improved with an option for thickness-based occlusion. And our simulation engine has received updates to soft bodies. While Moto 10 was designed with games and virtual reality workflows as a focus, it changes and elevates the way you work, regardless of discipline. Right, so, you know, it, it, by the sound of it, um, Moto 10 is designed for virtuality, the new 3D environments, the headsets to, to create basically games that obviously work with uh, a virtual headset uh, which is cool I mean if that's the future that's the future I mean like myself I don't really create uh, video games I'm more movie visual effects and modeling uh, but yeah interesting stuff um, it does sound uh, very interesting so let's just check out the enhanced controls and see what these guys say about the enhanced controls Moto 10 is all about making complex asset creation tasks easier. Our new Vertex Normal tools allow you to explicitly manipulate Vertex Normals to control shading smoothness on low polygon assets. This feature contains a series of tools that aid in constructing a custom Vertex Normal map on the mesh. Any component type can be used as input and the tool set even aids in the creation of UVs that correspond to the requirements of a mesh with hardened normals. In addition to generating tangent basis data suitable for use with normal maps in Unreal, we've also added the ability to create data suitable for use in both Unity and Source. Okay, so they're collaborating quite a lot, which is which is which is cool. So yeah, that's um, basically what it is really. Um, I, like I say, guys, I don't I don't create video games and stuff like that. You know, um, I'm not a video cr game creator. Um, 
but it sounds like it's going to be uh, pretty goddamn awesome, this update. Um, obviously, like I've just said, guys, I don't know a lot about Modo. I'm just, you know, winging it, basically. Um, I'm more of a Maya person, myself. Um, but, like I said, I will be getting into Modo um, heavily um, and studying it um, and playing around with it. And when that time comes, um, yeah, be sure to um, expect some cool tutorials. I'll learn and I can just bring it to you guys. So as always guys, I hope you found this video interesting. Um, I know it's a brief one and short one. Uh, please remember to hit that like button and that subscribe button guys. And I will definitely catch you guys uh, in the next one. Ciao, ciao.